What is happening? Happy Wednesday, guys. Scott, welcome, welcome. Irief, Kevin, what is up, buddy? Harkin, Scott, Irief, what else we got in here so far? Hopefully everyone's having a happy, wonderful Wednesday. McCullum's Reef, Gow Gow. Trying something a little different today. Trying to stream from the living room by the tank and figure I'd do a bit of like a live tank update. So hopefully audio, everything's sounding good. I'm also trying to be fancy and use my wireless mics. So hopefully it's working well. Uh, it was just at Reef of Palooza last weekend, which was pretty exciting. It was a lot of fun. Um, Kevin, Gabriel, if you guys are on, you guys rock. You guys are to my Patreon, so much love. Uh, really awesome to meet you guys in person. <laughs> Best part of Wednesday's just started awesome. Thanks, Kevin. All right, so a few new things with the tanks, uh, I guess. So I just heard the, actually the Elkatronic kick on. And so that's doing its thing testing. Hi from Illinois. Welcome, welcome. Sounds good. Perfect. Rah! So I'll show you guys some of the new stuff that I have going on. Pop off all the side panels for now. Uh, so one really cool thing is with side panels is making them magnetic. So you go pop the whole things off and makes it really super duper easy. What's going on, Philip? Sounds good, Kevin. Hello from Scotland. Um, yeah, any of you guys are at Reefa Palooza? Nice to meet you guys. It was a lot of fun. Uh, super awesome event. Way too many late nights, lots of time hanging out. Met tons of people. It was a lot, a lot of fun. So if you guys haven't went, you should go. Actually, any reefing shows can be a lot of fun. So what's good? Life is good, man. Life is good. So we're, look at this. We're testing this up. We got the nice big USB cord. Uh, big question, how are the NEMs? So I do not have the NEMs yet. The NEMs are coming soon. I'm sh getting them shipped back because that's way too much water volume. So I bought a good chunk of NEMS. So if we look at the Nano, you can kind of see the colors are on the webcam are not quite as good as normal, but gives you an idea. So we got a good chunk of NEMS, but we still have all this free sound bed space. So this is going to be completely packed full of rock flowers in another week or so. So I'm really excited for that. I think it's going to look really cool. I wish the webcam had better colors. But what else we got? A little Dragon's Breath algae. That guy's kind of cool. This NEM is it's crazy how much it's stretching up. It's kind of neat. Keep on reefing next month. Yes, sirree. So if any of you guys are in the Rhode Island, Cincinnati type of area, Keep on reefing is going to be a pretty awesome event. So core, and I'm really excited for it. Check that out. I've got a little baby rock flower right there. And on the side here, there's that little green one. So I got two baby rock flowers there. Technically was a third on a different little rock that I moved. So I don't know if he's in the sand bed. I'll have to check tonight when the blues are on. Homegrown frags, welcome. Um, speaking of coral updates, the ones I got from you are looking amazing. Or the Shootsman on Instagram, if you guys want to check them out. Tons of nice stuff. So let's take, do 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 do. So starting at the far end of the tank. Um, some of you guys saw my side panels, so they're kind of a work in progress. Uh, everything's magnetic, and this is just a piece of acrylic. So if I make a little control board, you'll be able to see all like the drivers and have my little display control board, which I think is going to be really cool. Um, how many gallons? It's around 160 for the display. It may be, if you count the sump and everything, I don't know. I'm just going to say 160, because it's about 160 gallons water volume. But if you subtract the rock and everything else, and then plus sump volume, I figure it kind of balances out. I still got to clean up that big mess of stuff. So A cans are nice and fluffy and good. Actually, here, I'm going to grab a power meter. Hold up one sec here. I have been asked about A cans many, many times. So <laughs> temporary tank fuel, I grab the meter. All right, so I got the Kapara meter. I believe it's around 100 to 120, roughly, for the par for the A cans. And I'm going to test it. I'm playing with my light schedule a little bit and tweaking a bit lately. So we'll get a power meter and give it a quick test. Um, 
for those of you that don't have a power meter, incredibly useful tool. This one is slightly overkill, but I like overkill. So this one is the Apogee MQ510. I know it's one of the ones that BRS rents. And the cool thing about it is it's actually tuned for the blue lights and reef tanks, which most of them aren't. So don't drop it in the tank this time. Yeah, it's true. So thankfully they fixed it. Huge shout out to Apogee for helping fix it for my own mistake of getting this wet. That was much appreciated if you guys are watching. So do not drop your power meter into the tank. That is a terrible idea. Not recommended. Got one of my new shirts. It's kind of fun. Uh, your setup is my goal. It's so clean. Thank you, Josh. Thank you. This is one thing that kind of helped. Well, yes and no. This is kind of revision two of my tank in a weird way. So I originally had revision one of my tank, which was my previous shallow reef. I wasn't even really planning to upgrade this one. However, there was a bit of a hazy line in the tank and the guy that built the tank was amazingly awesome and basically re helped replace it. So that meant a small little upgrade. Let's find a good camera spot. So where's a better spot? I have been promising I was gonna check the ACAN stuff for a while now, so. All right, let's try this. So this goes. Let's don't drop the webcam in the tank. All right, ACANs. Everyone wants to know what my flow is, how they are, why they're so fluffy, etc. So current par at the ACANs. Um, so it's about 140 towards the center ones. Um, outsides around 120. The front here, 120. 157. All right. So about one, I'm going to say 110 to 150 is the range of ACAN par. Now, a couple things with par. Uh, when you want to look at par, how much light something is getting, that is a single point in time. So something else you got to consider is the duration of that par. So, you know, 100 par for five hours or 500 par for one hour could be delivering the same amount of light energy to a coral. I actually did do a video on this that's going to be released on Monday talking about it a bit. So that'll be coming up on Monday's video. But they're super fluffy. Um, I don't know if there's a good way to judge or tell flow. Um, you can see they're kind of shaking a little bit. Hold the camera still. So I'm going to say they're kind of medium flow, I guess I would call it. Low to medium flow. They're not being blasted, but you can definitely see them shaking and moving. So hopefully that kind of helps with that. Uh, I really wish the web camera gave better coloration. I'll have to find a way to use my DSLR for this one day. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to so 100 to about 150 on the left edge, which would be directly under the XR15. The outside edge was more around 100. So Acan Guard and everything in here is looking really happy. Uh, do you got some new, one new little chalice. And that one is the, what's it called? I always forget this one. Purple Monster. Really cool, super orange mouth, kind of blue, then goes to green. And then that one is from my buddy, the Shootsman, Homegrown with Frags. And we also got, uh, what's it called? Alien, or er, Stunner Chalice. And the other one's a Mummy Eye, I believe. So, so far, so good. We got, what's new? I got this one in Niagara. That is uh, Rainbow Clove Polyps. A Gattle Cam Link to your DSL to work with OBS. Um, I actually do have one, but it's a PCI card to my main desktop. It's not the living room, so I may have to drag it out here one day and try it. Um, that one's another cool little rainbow favia, I believe. Got the bounce mushrooms nice and happy. Uh, this guy is a really cool one I got from actually Big Al's at the Niagara Core Show. So some really pretty colors in that guy. Um, next coming over, we got kind of the little favia type of island here. It is Jason Fox, or Cyphastria, sorry. Uh, Jason Fox, Burning Banana. And in front of it, that's just kind of the standard one. I got a Worldwide Corals. I think one's a Bizarro, one's a Berserko. 
Um, I got those ones actually off Wincy, which you guys would have saw her video on Monday. Gorgeous tank. I am going to try and get her on a live stream one of these days. So I think she'd be a really interesting one to dig into a lot of these topics with. That one's a rainbow one. The one up top there is another one I got from, I think it's Candy Corals. It was an Aquaman Monty Pora. So it's very greeny blue with orange polyps. I really wish you guys had the proper colors of this stuff. But yeah, so far so good. Red Dragon's finally growing nice and happy. Uh, one of the biggest, actually, ones I've seen. Um, I forget the name of this guy. Uh, why are you so washed out? The one right on the top. Let me get my little pointer stick. My buddy actually told me what the name of this one is, and I already forgot. I'll have to ask him. But this guy has had some crazy growth lately. Like these shoots. The one cool thing about going away on a vacation is coming back and seeing a huge ton of growth. Like I swear I've gained a quarter of inch on this thing last week, so it's really started to grow. Uh, Greg, can't wait to see who shows up at Rap New York. Ah, uh, yes. Sadly, I wouldn't let you there, but it'll be good. Um, so I used to have all of my Euphilia out in front here, and I moved them all to the side. So this is kind of like the back wall of Euphilia. Uh, so I got the torch. I think this one's my rainbow or a hellfire torch. I've seen a bunch of different names for it. And then we got the frog spawn, and then we got two different hammers. So uh, another thing people are asking for was coral placement and what can touch, what can't. So these ones obviously can all touch. Most euphilia is pretty safe. And I have, you know, the torches beside the frog spawn, beside the hammers, and everything's okay there. Uh, I got an octo spawn. I just kind of have that one in the middle inside of the archway. Uh, coming looking down, this one probably does not show up on camera, but I'm really excited for this coral. It is called a Tropicana. I've seen it called a Reef Wrap Tropicana, but what it is is an orange Anacropora. And yeah, you, uh, you can't even see the color of this one. It's like a really cool orange with green polyps. I just kept coming back to it and I had to have it. It's <laughs> super cool. It's just an amazing different colors on it. Uh, another thing I also did is I up the lighting on my lights a bit. So I more had my kind of modified AV plus schedule. Then for three hours of the day, I've been slowly increasing the white. So from noon to 3 p.m., it's been more white. So I start at 25 and I think up to 35% on the whites. So I'm doing that to try and just do a little more umph and kind of cook the corals a little more, which hopefully will help with the growth and color. Uh, now a few things. I have started to notice my tank color up a lot more lately, which has been good. Um, this guy was lower. This is a little piece of rainbow loom. Uh, a little bit better. So that's the rainbow loom. Um, I did have it over here. It was still pretty green, so I moved it up so we'll get a little more light and hopefully start to color up some more. Uh, but there's also a lot of other frags, like um, these little millies and stuff. Like They're really starting to uh, focus. Starting to baste and kind of crust out more, so it's pretty good. So kind of excited for that. Uh, what else we got? Sunset Millie, that's another one from the Shootsman. Homegrown frags, I'm really excited for that guy. That's been on my wish list for quite a while. And we come down to the sump, and we got a few new ones. This one is, so I bought two new Zoas at Reef Palooza. Uh, this one is Nirvana, and this one is, I don't know, someone told me a Skittles one. I think it was kind of a, a wild one, but there you go, kind of see it. So it goes from the front. So a couple new frags, so once they're kind of happy, I'm going to put them out in the tank later. Now other really new fun stuff. Um, I haven't really showed this yet, but I got a new skimmer. So I sold the giant coral box and I got the NIOS 160. So my other skimmer was giant. Um, basically, I wanted to try a fancier skimmer and I wanted more space in my sump chamber. So I've had this guy going. Um, I did do a bit of an unboxing video, but I generally like to use products for you know a good month before I actually put a video on it. Now, I was a little bit worried at first of how big the cup would be. Um, I cleaned it yesterday, so you can't really tell, but there's about that much super dark, nasty skin made in it after being gone for a week of Reef of Palooza, which is, so it worked so far, it's like skimming like a champ. Uh, one cool thing is the cup is tapered outwards, so it's really easy to get your hand in there and clean it. Um, just another little random fact, but that's been working well. Next chamber over, we got the AI Refugium Light. This thing grows Chato like a champ. Look at this, it's, this, it's solid, it's like a mat. All the way down. So, one, I actually, yes, last night, I tested all my elements on the tank. Ironworks Aquatic, what's going on? All right. 
See, okay. So last night I did a full test of everything on the tank. Um, haven't done it in a while. It's been about a month, so it's well overdue. My alkalinity was about eight. Um, calcium four twenty-five. Magnesium was low. That was twelve hundred. So I dumped in about twenty-four hundred mils last night. So I should boost it up to around fourteen hundred. And get this: phosphates zero, nitrates were one to two. That is the lowest I've ever been in my life. They're usually in the I'm gonna fifteen to thirty range. So huge difference. So shout out to my combination of filter products between the Refugium Light, Skimmer, Filter Roller, whatever it is, Magic Combination. That is the lowest I've ever been in my life for nutrients. Now I don't know for sure if that's the correlation of stuff starting to finally take off or the tanks just kind of settled in after doing the upgrade and moving it over. But the last few weeks, month or so, everything in the tanks just starting to take off and grow and stuff. So the tank is happy. Tank's happy, I'm happy. Where's my little pointer stick? Yeah, so even like in Niagara a few weeks ago, like some of the new frags I've added, they're starting to pool onto the rocks. You know, they're puddling out, they're basting, which is an awesome sign of growth. Um, this is another one I got off a of buddy. This is Pink Cadillac. And when I first put it in, it was super pale and white. And now I'm starting to get lots of really deep, rich purples out of it and like nice lighter tips. So uh, I wish this had better color on the web camera but it's looking really awesome, so tons of growth. And another random fact, uh, Digitata is used to not do well in my tank for some reason. Um, so this guy is just a red Digi, and I got a forest fire or a bubble gum in the back. And for whatever reason, in the past, they used to die or bite the dust on me. And now they seem to be thriving, they're growing, none of my Digis have died, and everything's been really happy. So that's been really cool. Uh, that'll be the Chato primarily. Yeah, probably. But I, I give away Chato on a regular basis. Ugh, look at those pods even. See those guys? There's like massive pods hiding out in here. Um, yeah, so this has been working really well. A um, few people have asked me about my little kind of light guards. So I 3D printed these. And I did it so that I could kind of, as like light shaper, so it would block the light. So I don't get LG in my clear tubes. I don't get LG in my skimmer. Um, I've been working with Vivid Creative Aquatics, and he's the guy that does the random flow generator nozzle, basically to like print these out and just sell them for me. I'm trying to make them super duper cheap and affordable, and he can do it a heck of a lot cheaper than I can. So hopefully pretty quick, these are going to be out, out in the wild. But yeah, super simple little product. I'm just trying to make something cheap, easy solution to keep your stuff looking good and not have LG on it. So yeah, keep an eye out for that pretty quick. Um, next over, we got the Kamor pump. Um, people have asking for an update on this. I, it's been using it for, I don't know, four or five months now, probably since I had the tank. Now, the only issue I have had with it is it, after a while, it was starting to get a little bit louder. Um, it wasn't as silent as it once was. Now, in general running, if it's less than about 24 mils, I get some kind of interesting like harmonic sounds or noises out of it. Oh, apparently I didn't screw that back in. So it was kind of like meh, like different tones. So above 24 mil, it didn't really seem to have that issue. So I purposely running at a bit of a higher speed just so I don't get it. Now some of the weird little noises or squeaks that I had, um, what I did to fix it was I turned off the pump and I used some paper towel and just gave it a wiping. And I used a, kind of a food safe lubricant. I figured this would be safe if I ever got in the tank. Uh, this is one I used on just like a coffee machine before. So I used that to kind of re-grease it and it made it quiet again. So after three or four months, it was a bit noisier. Uh, I know once a year, probably have to replace the roller and the tube. I think they say, you know, every three or four months or so. So I did pick up a few more tubes for that. So some future expansion. Uh, what's going on, Ravencaw? Make them white so they reflect light rather than absorb it. Yeah, that's a good point, Greg. We can print them in white as well. Either work. Um, those ones I just printed in PLA. Um, as for Antonio, what he's actually printing it in, I'll double check with him. I just sent him all my models and prototypes and stuff and just getting him to tweak it a little bit because he has an army of little printers. And shipping can is expensive, so he could probably print them and ship them for me for the price I'd spend just on shipping. So, still gotta clean up the rat's nest. Alkalinity test did when I started the stream. So, there you go, 8.14 is the current elk. Um, this is just for looks, it's absolutely doing nothing at the moment. I still gotta hook this up eventually. Got the two power bars and a big rat's nest of wires, so this still needs to be cleaned up. 
Um, I may do a really cool custom kind of control panel and work with Adaptive Reef on that. So that's all future stuff to come. Uh, now, some other people were asking earlier in the Facebook group about coral placement. So if you guys aren't in the Facebook group, uh, just search for Reef Dudes, Saltwater Community or something like that, Saltwater Chat. And yeah, if you ever have any questions, you can always ask it in there. Um, so what corals can go together? Generally, the same type of coral will be okay. Like you can see, I got the red dragon and the teal deepwater acro are both touching, not an issue. Zoa is touching, not an issue. You know, zoan rock flowers are touching there. You can see the zoa is just around the edge of it, a little closed up, but they're still kind of half open. Now, what you got to worry about is certain corals will fight each other, and one may take over against the other one in a bit. Um, even on the base of that super big polypi gargonium, there's a little bit of a monty that's still there. So that's starting to grow and come back. But so far, it doesn't really, it's hard to say who's actually winning in that one. Um, when it comes to acros, certain ones, if I start to see them start to touch, I'll usually frag off a little branch, just so they're not growing together. Um, sometimes, you know, you might just see who wins, sometimes they'll fuse together. But generally the same species is more loving than a different species, so. Like I said earlier, Euphelia is all good. You know, in this little branch, you can see different types of zoas and mushrooms are touching, not really an issue. Um, so same thing, like for like, so trumpet corals, those guys are all close enough, basically touching, not really an issue. Gargonians, um, these haven't been an issue. I mean, they're all buddy-buddy, so I'm kind of excited to see this grow together. I think it's gonna look super amazing. Speaking of Goniaporas, my little collection here is slowly growing. These guys are super awesome. What's going on, Seymour? Colson Smith, don't know if, I, if you remember. Dude, it's always a pleasure. I met so many people at the show. It, it was really a lot of fun. If you, if you guys are ever out at a show, definitely come say hi. I love meeting you guys. Super cool, and I love talking reefs, so always game. So this is a little Ghani Island in the making. Yeah, I got another little mushroom island there. Uh, what else is new in here? We got that guy, the orange and Acropora, which is super cool coral. Uh, a bunch of little millies on top. In the back, that's also new. I got a purple bird's nest, Pompeii bird's nest. Pon Ponape, sorry. Uh, I'm still, I'm actually been on a quest to learn the names of a lot of my corals. In the past, I used to never really care. And now I just want to make sure, I don't know, I don't get a second or a duplicate one. I've had them once or twice when you get them and all of a sudden they start to look the same. Uh, green milliporias. Milliporias are still one of my favorites. Even one thing that I've kind of found interesting is in the past, if you've had different issues with my tank, I've had certain stuff die and millies have been rock solid. They've been like one of the hardier corals for me. Like I've lost um, like a porcelopora and then the mill millies like thriving and happy. So I mean, that guy started as one little twig, you know, years ago and now it's grown really well. Uh, we will be at Magna, that is the plan. So I should be there, Hargens. Uh, let's see if that uh, does not show up on camera at all. The little guy right there is a neon green. It's, it looks like a highlighter, basically, poor Silipore. It is crazy how bright that guy is. Now, one slight issue with my tank, my escape, is I know I'm eventually gonna run into issues with the corals growing into each other. In an ideal world, I would have left more space between them, but the hard thing is when you're starting a tank and you start with little, you know, pinky finger sized nubs, it's hard to envision them getting the big collies and all grow together. So it's definitely going to take a little bit of bonsai pruning to keep things from getting each other long term, which I know I'm in for it, but that's okay. Uh, there's a little vacation home there, always poking out. That's where the NEM used to be. Um, now, for the NEM trap that I used to get that out. I used uh, thermoplastic, it's like little beads that you put in hot water and they get super soft. Um, this stuff's extremely useful. Uh, as you can see, I've been using it to like mount little frags, make little ledges. So under that little incinerator zoa there, you can see the little thermoplastic kind of putty stuff. So that stuff works really well. Uh, I also recently used it to kind of raise up and stabilize little shallow island over here. So super cool, that thermoplastic stuff. It hardens, it's reef safe, food safe. So really cool stuff, it's very versatile. So one of my new favorite tools for adding on aquascaping and that type of stuff. 
Uh, there was some other questions in the Facebook group that I can't 100% remember at the moment, so if you guys got any, feel free to ask as we go. Um, on the Gargonian rock, same thing, I added another wing going out kind of behind it to make more spots to put Zoas, so it's been slowly adding on to the aquascape and making more ledges for different stuff throughout it. Uh, another really cool one I don't have installed yet, but I'm going to have to get rid of my basket of rocks, and I got one of those NAS torque reactors. Uh, I, ironically, I actually had the tube for like a couple months. I had a buddy that bought one, and he had the biggest one in the medium-sized tube, and he decided he's only going to use the biggest one, so I got the medium one off him. So I finally got a base for it, so I'm kind of excited to hook that baby up and use that. Uh, I'm mainly just going to use it for carbon. Obviously, GFO I don't really need because I have zero phosphate, so this Chato is growing like a champ. Um, I'll probably just run a very small amount of carbon. Now, it hasn't been a big issue because I'm still running ozone. I do get asked about that a lot. It's, uh, it's kind of hiding way down there. But I do have, hiding behind my little acrylic thing, I do have an ozone generator. And what that does is... Homegrown frags, two new babies on the pink hippo. Excellent, excellent. Uh, where's my pink hippo? Did I lose my pink hippo? Somewhere in here. Um, so ozone kind of works like carbon. Now, the Nio skimmer, I got two, two hoses here. Uh, the clear one goes to an outside airline, and the black one goes to my ozone generator. And the cool thing with the Nio skimmer is on the bottom, there's a little port for ozone built into it. So it's made to handle ozone. Now, I run it at a very low amount. So I'm going to say about 20, 25 mils per hour. And I run that from about, I think it's 1 a.m. to 5 a.m. Or midnight to 5 a.m., something like that. So four or five hours a night. Um, and what ozone does is it will essentially break down organics in the water. So it will help keep your water crystal clear and remove any of those yellowing pigments. Uh, Dev, does is it stay pliable long enough to use underwater? I'd say you have about 30 seconds to a minute of work time with the thermoplastics. Um, you can put it in, yeah. Yeah, about 30 seconds once it hits the water. So I kind of do a rough mold of it outside the tank, and then I'll dunk it underwater, and as it cools, it gets stiffer and stiffer and harder. Does the skim uh, thermoplastic make the skimmer go crazy? I actually didn't even notice the difference in the skimmer, so not enough to worry about if it has any effect on it. But the stuff is incredibly useful. I think I bought a tub of it for about 25 bucks for... 250 300 grams and just, I, I've mounted so much stuff with it. I gave a buddy a big handful of it So it actually goes a long ways uh, Yeah, so yeah ozone so really cool that this is ozone ready right out of the bat uh, another thing I added Just as a safety if you see that little box right there. It's a XP Aqua skimmer overflow protection type of thing. I don't want to Take off the lid because if I hit it it might set off the alarm. There you go. See, it's a little optical sensor. Um, they were only, I think it was about 80 bucks. That was Canadian, so probably like 60 bucks US. And it's an optical sensor. And the cool thing about it is it's magnetic. So if I take it off, or you can put it on whatever you want, and it'll go through glass, whatever, it just reflects the light. But if my skimmer ever overflows, or is about to overflow, it'll set off an alarm and then cut off power to the skimmer. So I just added that as a bit of a safety, so I never have to worry about the potential overflow. I thought that was a really cool product, and you know, it's decently affordable. Uh, need to lower my phosphates. Any simple ideas? Refugium. Your easy solution is run a refugium. Uh, if you don't have space for refugium, GFO. Um, so GFO, or granuloid ferric oxide, is very powerful. It will absorb phosphates and can lower them very dramatically. With GFO, less is more, so run very low flow, or just don't add too much all at once. Because if you don't want to drop it too fast, because that could impact SPS, or potentially other corals, it's good to have a little bit of phosphates. Now, I have been feeding my tank quite a bit, and after testing and seeing I have next to nothing for nutrients, I'm really going to step it up and try and feed the tank very, very heavy. I already felt I was doing it heavy, but it's going to get heavier now that I know I can. Uh, which NIOS skimmer is that? This is the NIOS 160. I'll probably do a video on it in about a month or so. I like to use stuff for a while before I do any videos just to make sure it's all good. But so far, I'm loving it. It's been skimming like a champ. I almost wish I didn't clean it yesterday. I'm going to say there was about that much really dark, nasty stuff. 
Um, now it also has an AC power pump in it, and it is amazingly quiet for AC. I went from a DC one, and I was worried about the noise, and it's still super silent. Uh, the noisiest thing in my tank right now is just like the calcium reactor pump. There's like a slight little hum rattle to it, so I don't know if my impeller is slightly not aligned, but I gotta dig into that later. And that's literally the loudest thing in my sump right now. So the skimmer is super duper quiet, very happy with it so far. Yeah, so give me a few weeks. Um, how many total gallons? I'm gonna guess 160 ish. It's roughly 160 for the display, then plus sump, but then subtract sand and rock and stuff, so whatever. I'm gonna say about 160. The water displacement's always a bit trickier to try and calculate or figure out. But one of these days I'll get my button gear and actually mount all this and finish cleaning up my wires. Uh, now the one thing, I, I have to fix my link, but I have that cable stuff in the back. And it's called Panduit. And that's basically to tuck all the wires in and hide it. So I had to change some stuff, so I got to finish retucking it all back in. But it's a good way to, a little bit of a pain when you want to change something. but to keep everything nice and clean normally, especially if you're looking like straight on, you don't even see it. So, really good way to do it. Um, the glue on little light strips is obviously very useless, so I have these little kind of holders on there. So I gotta, maybe I'll try beat a super glue or something, but, or not super glue, hot glue or something, but I gotta fix my light. So, I have these little clamps on there just in case, so I knew it'd fall eventually and it doesn't fall into your water. Another little, another little quick tip. Uh, it's extra rock and some ream pure under there, so that's going to come out. I'm going to put in that NAS torque reactor soon, so expect a future video on that guy. Uh, I got the audio feeder in the sump, if any of you guys have seen any of my talks that I did at the Niagara show. Uh, one cool thing I like to do is have an auto feeder in the sump. Now I do that because who wants to clutter up the sleek lines of your tank with a big chunky auto feeder? Now I can't really see because it it's really dark, but I have a power head in the bottom corner here. And when a few minutes before the auto feeder comes on, the power head kicks on, it does crazy high flow in the sump, so a couple thousand gallons per hour. And the auto feeder will drop pellets. And the whole point of the pump is to keep the pellets suspended, so they keep circling the sump until they get sucked into one of the pumps. And then they get spit out into the tank. And then the fish get a little feeding, feeding frenzy because there's pellets being shot everywhere. They love it. What's going on, Rogue Aquariums? Have one emerald crab, my 10 gallon. He isn't eating the bubble algae, what do I do? They won't all eat it. It's kind of luck of the draw to be honest. Some do, some don't. Uh, hey Devin, my skimmer is running great now to the breaking time. Awesome, Stefan, good to hear. I really like my setup, why thank you. Yeah, Naya skimmers are not cheap. Uh, I, well, Naya stuff in expense is not the cheapest, but it, it is super quality. Like. It's a very sexy skimmer. One other really cool thing, you can't see the bubbles on it, but the front of the pump housing is clear. So you can look inside of it and see if there's anything caught in the impeller, or if it's dirty, which I think is a really cool kind of feature for it. I still gotta prep myself one of those little flaps for this light to prevent it. So I just have the light angled for now, but I'm gonna make a little flap for it to like this stuff. Um, dart pumps aren't either, yeah. So yeah, some really cool features on this. Um, big one, this is like your big adjustment up and down and you have a fine tuning adjustment for the bubbles. I run a super duper dry skim, that's kind of the way I like to do it. Let's make it a little close a bit more. Um, filter roller, yes, still loving this, I get asked that all the time. This thing, it's probably a team effort between everything of why I have no nutrients now. But I've never had no nutrients in my life, so that still honestly amazes me. It's the lowest I've ever been. But the combination of three have been working very, very well. How long do you run your refugium light? So currently it is 15 or 16 hours. It's really dusty. Um, so I'm gonna reduce that pretty soon here. So either reduce the intensity of it or I'll just run it for a shorter duration. Jay Lee Reefer, 99 cent super chat. Thank you, Jay Lee, much appreciated. And, 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 and. Kevin, Gabriel, Robert, if you guys are on here, Patreons. Thank you, I much appreciate it. And it's awesome to meet you, Kevin and Gabriel, in person at Rap Orlando. You guys are both awesome. Uh, so Davis, I use 3.8 staples to hold the LED. They're 10 mil wide on my stand. Ah, oh, that's a good idea. Excellent. Uh, that's a neat feature. I'd like one NAS one day, but on my upgrade, but now until I use that. Yeah, like, I had the coral box. The coral box worked well. It's hard to say if it's a big difference yet, like it's still kind of soon, but 
there's a big difference in nutrients since I've added it. So I don't know, it's hard to say it's a skimmer refugium. Honestly, it's probably a team effort. The filter roller takes out stuff where it breaks down. The skimmer gets rid of organics. I mean, the ozone will help break down organics. The refugium is going to suck it up and eat stuff. So, but yeah, definitely going to reduce that. The main point of the refugium running it more intense was to counteract my pH and boost up my pH. On my last tank, my pH was around like 7.9, 8.1. Now in this tank is about 8.12 to 8.25, something like that. So it's never been below eight, which is kind of cool. Uh, do you think the NAS 160 is big enough for a total water volume of 250? It's actually a very big range. If you look at the skimmer, um, I think you'd probably be fine. I think it was up to 200 something gallons for this one. They do have the 220, which is a bigger skimmer, but yeah, I don't know. So far, this one's been working really well. Zero complaints at all about it. So you'd probably be good. Um, on the flip side, it would kind of depend on how much you feed your tank, how many fish are in there, how much they're pooping, all that type of stuff. So it's hard to give like a blanket statement. But I, sometimes I kind of think it is better to under skim than over skim, right? So I think you're good. Kevin! $5.01 super chat. <laughs> It was a pleasure meeting you too, buddy. Thank you very much. And I'm excited for rock flowers soon. Uh, where do you put your effluent from out from the calcium reactor? So it sucks in from right there. So this little tube comes down. It's sucking from a return pump chamber. It goes in here, pushes into, bloop, goes through the reactor, and the out comes down over here. So right behind the skimmer, you can see the fluent dripping outwards. Um, so right beside the skimmer, now the skimmer is sucking from underneath the filter roller. So it's sucking the new stuff. The output of the skimmer comes out over on the back side. So it's kind of dripping on the outside of that. And that would flow into and through the chato. So having the fluent before the chato, that little bit of lower CO2 in the water is probably a decent amount of beneficial benefit to the chato. So the chato, that will help it grow a little more. And as the chato grows, it's going to raise my pH and help counteract it. I also run the pH inside of the calcium reactor a little bit higher. Um, I believe it is at 6.75, 6 6.8 somewhere right now, so it's not as low coming out. So you can kind of play with the pH and the flow and find the happy balance. And so far, it's been working out very well. So into the refugium, yeah, basically into the refugium, just prior to it. Uh, I was there when you were picking out rock flowers at Reef Palooza. Haha, <laughs> nice. Colson, did you get any rock flowers too? Look, see, that's about tw a little 20 ish. And it, it's only like half the sand bed. So, look, I got all that. I'm going to clear that out. The whole base of the sand bed. This guy is a monster compared to every other rock flower I own. Now, one interesting thing with rock flowers is sometimes, I don't know if it's about to potentially release eggs or sperm or anything, but I know the males sometimes they'll cup, cupping shape before they do it. And this guy's been really stretching lately, so I don't know if it's because of where he wedged himself or what, but he's extremely tall for a rock flower. A uh, little dragon's breath algae. Oh, another really interesting thing. I have been slacking, and I have not tested the Nano in quite a while. I tested it last night and the elk was I think it was 5.8 and that is crazy low like less than six to me that seems crazy low and but it's been growing like crazy Let's see if we can top down view this so these guys like there's just been a huge surge of growth in here like in this green one it's grown up it's almost locking in that millie the last little bit it's growing over the pink lemonade beside it like things have just really taken off lately and it's at a very low alkalinity, which I thought was kind of interesting. Now my nutrients are also very low in this tank. Um, Cause it's only 20 gallons, I give it a five gallon water change every week or so. So it's a very large water change relative to the size of the tank. And because of that, there's like not really a nutrient issue. I do feed it pretty heavy cause I think it will help promote rock flower spawning. But yeah, so every, all the corals are looking great. So I thought it was really interesting being that low of an elk because everyone promotes high alkalinity for growth. And that's the lowest I've ever had in my life and stuff are growing very well. So it's kind of interesting. Am I jumping on the sticker bandwagon? I don't know, to be honest. I'm half tempted just because so many other people are, but we'll see. 
Corals look great, bro. Thank you very much. You had great rock flowers. Thank you, thank you. I am super excited to get them. Uh, depending on the weather, potentially we'll go for the drive to the border to pick them up Friday. If not, then maybe next week. We'll figure that out soon. But the Nano overall is looking quite good and happy. This guy is growing really well. I put a little rock beside it, just let it encrust onto it, so easy way to make frags. What's going on? Holla at you, reef boy. Just the two fish in here right now. I got the Royal Gamma and the Purple Firefish. So, pretty low fish for loading here. This is going to turn into primarily a rock flower tank. A couple little sexy shrimp. Got the two babies. But yeah, overall it's doing pretty good. I did pick up this guy. This is a little anemone or mushroom box from Ocean Box Designs and it magnets onto the glass so this will be in there. Once I actually get a good spawn, lots of babies, then you can put them all in a little box and it makes it easier to feed them. So one of the biggest things to get your little baby rock flowers to live and make it is being able to feed them. So, so far you're so good so I try and target feed them at least every other day. Um, obviously not the week I was gone but when I'm here. So for sure there's two babies, possibly three in there, if the other one's still in there. And hopefully they make it. Because I'm really excited to hopefully get them to spawn. Someone bought all the fire. Yep, that would be me. Ah, ha, ha. Ah, ha, ha. All the good rock fires. So yeah, pretty excited for that. So I might put a couple rock flowers into the big tank, maybe on the side of the rocks or some other funky places. Like that guy's in a little hole on the side and I've had him for ages. He's doing really well. Got a little rainbow one up there and another red one, so yeah, we'll see. They might be cool to kind of fill in sides of rock where there's not really other corals growing. Kind of excited for it. Give Reese a thumbs up. Thanks, Ed. If you guys enjoy this, as always, smash that thumbs up button. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the chat. Well, I think I've covered most of the main stuff, unless you guys got any specific questions on anything. Um, Flow-wise... I got four MP40s in here. Probably don't need four, but I got them. Uh, two on the back wall, two on this wall. I originally had the two, but I was having a little bit of issue with a little bit of a film building up on the surface of the peninsula land. That's because all my flow was pushing away from the overflow. This is kind of one of the struggles of a peninsula tank. So uh, putting one on the back side helps agitate the water. It doesn't let that little film kind of build up. So that's really helped it. Now when the tank turns into true peninsula mode, I still haven't decided what I'm going to do with that one. Always a thumbs up. I <laughs> appreciate it. Do you have sexy shrimp? I got one at Reef Palooza from Kevin with my enemies. Nice. I do. I have... Uh, there's one. I should have two or three in here. Well, sexy shrimp are cool little guys. They're usually hanging out somewhere around the NEMS. Uh, did I see a dendro? Yes, he did. For some reason, it's not open at the moment. But I bought a single head of dendro a couple years ago, and it almost died on me. And that was the original one, you can see the hole. And now on the edges of it, there's a bunch of little babies coming up. So I got four or five now. So there's definitely lots of heads coming. Drop a super chat and join him with the Patreon stuff. Thank you, Kevin. Rogue Aquariums, 49 super chat. Thank you. Much appreciated. I appreciate the love. Um, Kevin, you're also awesome. Thank you. Rogue Aquariums, if you haven't checked out his build, he's building a very sweet tank, and I'm really excited to see them together. One day I'm going to come to Washington and visit you. I'm going to film it. It'll be good. Keep up the good work. Thank you, thank you. Gabriel, I saw you on early if you're still on. Thank you as well, buddy. Um, I never actually advertise it. Kevin always tells me I should. But I do have a Patreon. I have three of them. Thank all three of you. Just picked one up of Rat. Excellent. Flowers are beautiful. Thank you, Tina. Love the dendros. All love here. Tons of love. Um, all right, guys. What else you got? What do you want to know? Ask away. Uh, the other thing I get asked very frequently is about the light bar. This is made out of extruded aluminum. This is what you call 2020, or this specifically is 1515. And it is bolted to my steel stand. If you look down the hole there, I put a hole in the stand and put the light bar into it. So it's a nice, easy way to mount it. <laughs> it's been a while. Love the flower nouns. Feel inspired. Ed, five dollars and two cents. Thank you very much. <laughs> it was four ninety nine five zero one five zero two. Uh, I really appreciate Ed, and I have not seen you on a stream in a while. So welcome back, Ed. It's good to see you back in here. Claudius Reefer, ten dollars. 
Dude, seriously, thank you guys. I really appreciate it. Much, 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 much appreciated. Thank you for the love. Loving the tank, thank you very much. So yeah, I don't know. Now, I know a few weeks ago I posted a video from Ash, who is another YouTuber, and he had a big talk. And one of his main kind of points was that low nutrients is what really helped his tank thrive, stuff started to grow. Now, coincidentally, the last month or so, my tank really seems to get in his groove and started growing and taking off again. Now, is this related to super low nutrients? Possibly. Is it just the tank's finally settled after upgrading and moving and changing everything? Could be that too. But whatever it's been, the last month or two, stuff has really started to just take off, you know, encrusting, you know, corals that I had struggles with in the past are doing well, like that. Uh, you can see, where's my little poker stick? Um, right in the front there, that is a wild Aussie Yakro, whatever it is. Super fluffy, super cool guy. But that thing's been growing like crazy. I had the tiniest twig of it a month ago, and now it's like bzz, growing. Super polypy, so that, that's really cool. <laughs> because it's you. Kevin is the man, the Nem Master. If um, Fishy Snowman's on here, buddy, I'm coming for you with the rock flower tank. <laughs> Which slate would you recommend for a Nano, Kessel 160, or AI Prime? I really like the AI Prime. Um, I have not used the Kessel 160, keep that in mind. But this Prime has been working very well. It's tiny, it's sleek. Um, other than the crappy web camera colors, like everything in here has been growing well. Look, my acros are nice. Like this one is, like look at the colors on this guy. Like all the, I don't know, everything is growing extremely well. Like, this, this slide's doing a good job. And it's like 200, I think it's 209 bucks US, something like that. Um, same thing, I got, I got a second one for just frags. Um, on my last tank, I had an XR15 I used for frags, so I wanted to match it, but it's, honestly, it's hard to beat the little primes for the price tag. Like, it's a very good price point for what you get. Um, so I stole my old frag light and that went on the tank. Now, one thing people are like, oh man, it must have went crazy, spent a fortune. One thing to keep in mind, is I, I started with two of these lights like four tanks ago. And I, and I bought two more used ones when I was upgrading. Like you just build up stuff over time. Um, now the video that I posted on Monday, which I thought was really cool, was from Wincy. And she's like a really cool lady that I met. She lives in Niagara Falls, Ontario, Canada. Absolutely beautiful tank. And she has like the most low tech tank in the world, which I find really cool because her tank is absolutely gorgeous. And it just shows you don't need to be super crazy with all your equipment. Our equipment makes your life easier, but you don't need it. So I think it's a really cool contrast, and I think it's kind of fun to show you guys that. Um, I have been talking to her about getting her on a live stream. So she does work Wednesdays, so there may be an improv to live stream on another random day when I could rope her into one. I think it'll be a fun chat with her. Fishy gill. <laughs> uh, love the tank. Thank you, thank you. So one kind of fun thing is this is re revision two. Um, I don't know if, I don't think everyone completely knows this, but my old tank was built by Concept Aquarium, so it did a fabulous job. However, it had some weird hazy line that was across the panel of the glass, and it kind of developed more over time. Now, on my old tank, the lights were lower to the water, and I, with the radions, I had the narrow lens on it. So they didn't have as wide spread, so it was kind of there, but didn't really notice it. And then once I raised the lights up and a few other things, it really, it highlighted it more. So I contacted them, and they basically said, yeah, it's possible to buff it out, but it's less work to build a new tank. So that's really what inspired this whole upgrade. So I wasn't even planning on upgrading the tank, but if I was going to replace the tank, I figured I might as well go a little bit bigger. So kind of backstory on it all. So it's been four and a half, five months now. I basically took my old design and tweaked it a little bit and tried to like improve just the, the little subtle things versus what my old tank was. Got to go lever channel. Thank you, Colson. See you later. So like for instance, on the old one, I had the light bar bolted to the front of the steel stand. Now, in order to gain that extra two inches of tank space so I can make it two inches longer, I had to put in a, another tube in the middle but left the top open so I could drop the light bar into it. So just like little tweaks, right? So just little tiny design changes. Um, now with the light bar and all those lights on it, there is a tiny bit of sag. So I just put a little block of wood against the overflow just to kind of act to straighten it a little bit and kind of counteract it. But aside from that, the light bar has been pretty solid. The only one other little mini struggle is 
it's kind of hard to jam five wires into that tube. So the first half is all nicely tucked in. And then there's a few, you can say a couple of Velcro straps here, but I have the last little stretch of it. I have a couple of them just outside the bar and kind of held on there. So kind of a little thing. So once I find a way to prop fully hide them, but overall I think it worked out to be a pretty, pretty sleek setup. And you guys have no idea. I honestly obsessed for like two months of figuring out how to properly build this light bar to be floating. So yeah, worked out pretty well. Uh, metal stands are sweet. Love the red and white theme. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, once, once this is all cleaned up here, I'll be really happy with it. So it's getting there. Uh, one big thing. Uh, so for the metal stand, I use heavy wall two inch steel to do the stand. Uh, the main reason for this is you don't have to have a center brace. I pop off my side panels, the whole thing's open. There's nothing in your way to block anything. So huge fan of steel stands and the price compared to wood is not much of a difference. So might be worth looking into if you guys ever want to get a metal stand. I definitely would say they're one of the better ways to go. Uh, for the doors, super cool doors, so uh, had these made by Adaptive Reef and they're made out of PVC and I've countersunk the magnets into them. So really kind of easy modular type of door pattern. So it literally just goes bloop and sucks to the side of the tank and I have multiple panels. I was originally going to link them together to do one big panel, but it's kind of easier to just pop them this way. So super easy way. So steel stand, magnet it on, and done. Nice, easy way, clean up your stand. Gives that really clean, kind of fancy look. I mean, being magnets, once in a while you don't get it perfectly lined up, so just give a little nudge on the far end, and just push it over and get them all lined up. But steel stands are great. Um, on the old stand too, I would use magnets to mount everything inside. So that's another good tip for you guys. What's going up, Nathan? How are you doing? So, let's pull one off and show you guys. So, magnets are your friend with steel stands. So if you look up into the back here, I got these little magnet hooky things. And I use that to hide a lot of the wires. So, I pull these down. It's just like a magnet with a hook on it. And you can use that to tuck up all your wires and hide it all. That way when you're looking at your tank, you don't have a big mess of wires. It just goes like, you know, that extra little step to keep things looking nice and sleek. Bloop. Uh, what else we got for an update? Doo -doo -doo. I have a mangrove in my return just for fun, slowly growing. It's kind of happy it sprouted and it's slowly getting there. It's kind of spinning in a spiral around this tube, but my just for fun mangrove. Um, Race the powder blue, he loves it. All right, Bob, you ready, buddy? You ready? Come here. Ready, 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 go. So Bob loves to race the magnet, it's his favorite. Ready, 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 go. Oh, jump the gun, go. Too slow, ready, 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 go. So it's kind of fun, my wife loves to race and cracks me up. What's up, Rip Van, Rip Van Winkle? Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Um, diffusers, I get asked about the diffusers quite a bit. Um, love the diffusers. Just annoyed the vacuum, apparently. Uh. Um, do love the diffusers. They give a best way to explain it is they give you something in the middle of LED and T5. Camera's not focusing. So with LED, you get the crazy focus. So with normal LEDs, without them, you get the kind of like chaotic, I think they call it caustics. I call it like micro shimmer. <laughs> Don't make him smash his nose in the glass, nice. Um, I call it micro shimmer. You get the crazy one. With the diffusers, it gives you a much more soft shimmer everywhere. Which you can kind of see, like if I pop one off, see if I use one hand. Okay, so I take the one off, and you can see it all like the micro jittery shimmers on the bottom. And you put this back on. Maybe if I can get it on. 
and it gives that much more kind of softer fluid shimmery throughout the tank. There we go. So it gets rid of the micro shimmer and I also find it evens out the par, the par as well. Like the G4s already have a pretty even par, but the diffusers kind of makes it more of a blanket. It gives it more of that T5 look where it kind of blankets around the coral. So yeah, I don't know. I think the T5 LED mix is a good idea, but for an open tank, I think it's too bulky and cluttery. You know, aesthetics is a huge part of me because it's, you know, in the middle of my living room and I want it to look sleek. So I think the LEDs with diffusers are like a huge win for that because it gives you kind of something in the middle. If you could change anything about your system, what would it be? You know, I've already kind of done that because this is version two of the same tank and I've already tweaked a bunch of those little changes, but they're like little things, right? Like. I put the light bar inside of the tube rather than in front of it, so that gave me two more inches of length. Like, just little things that I changed. Um, I added a second return pump for redundancy, like, completely overkill, but if one ever dies, my tank's not going to miss a beat. So, I've already kind of done a lot of that. Uh, yeah, Kevin's saying softer look. Agreed. My wife also says it's easier on the eyes rather than looking at the bare LEDs. Just a little light panel, so overall I like it. How much am I dosing my nano tank? I'm dosing about five mils a day, roughly. Uh, my elk was super low, so I just upped that a little bit. But I got the doser going, and yeah, I think it was around 4.5 mils a day, and last night I had an extra mil to it just because I was a little bit low on some of my parameters. So, so far so good with that. I'll top that off, but. Um, I did do a bit of a manual dose, so I'll have to check it again today, and then adjust from there. A little overflow stuff. Um, for flow in the tank, I just have the stock return pump. And I have the Nero 5 in the background. It's a little dirty now. Um, that's sitting in the back. I do have the magnet submersible. They don't advertise as that. I've been doing it. So far, so good. This is a little frag rack wall. Got a new little sleek one on top, and I got my rock ones below. Just kind of growing out a bunch of the frags I got at the few shows until they're a bit bigger, then I'll mount them somewhere in one of the two tanks. Uh, and the other thing I did, I honestly have not used this skimmer in months. I just leave it turned off. I should take it out and gain the space. It's kind of loud. I don't know if you can hear it or not. It's not terrible, but it's still a bit on the loud side. Um, so it's there. I only can use it half the time. In the back. I haven't used the, the filter socks in a long time. I just put a little chunk of that polyfill stuff on top, and then every week or two I'll just toss it and put in a new chunk. Um, it does have that nice little flap. I do appreciate that because it hides all the stuff behind it. Uh, the stock one, you got two little switches, kind of your little control panel for the return pump and that. And overall, so how do you find the e coral controller? Okay. Quick and dirty e-coral. So I've been using the e-coral for four or five months now. The app is really easy and intuitive. They did a fantastic job on the app. Um, once or twice I had a little issue where it said the power bar was disconnected from the controller. It did seem to fix itself very shortly after, so it wasn't really a big issue. Um, all the probes, everything. The I find the salinity probe for the Apex super flaky. This one's actually been really reliable, so they get a plus for that. My one downside to it is that when you get relative to an Apex, eh? I think you have six, do you have six outlets? Yeah, so you have six outlets on this where you get eight on the Apex. People ask me all the time the comparison. Uh, the one thing that I feel is lacking is like a breakout box. So you can control stuff, but you can't really do stuff based on input. So I couldn't say I have a switch trigger my cabinet lights, for instance. Um, so I did suggest that to them. So I do think it will be coming down the road, but currently they don't have that. So that's one of the bigger things on it. Um, the price point, it'd be nice if it was a bit cheaper. That's the other type of thing. But overall, for my Nano, it has worked very well. I don't do as much as I do on the big tank, because I have a lot more equipment stuff on that one, right? I got like my power bars are both two power bars will full on that one. So for a very easy, intuitive, simple to use setup, they did a fantastic job. Breakout box would be a nice addition to it. And, you know, a little cheaper, never hurts either. How big is it now and again? This is a 20 gallon all in one tank. So it's about, it's basically an 18 inch cube. The back few inches is your return chamber. All your little chambers in the back. 
Uh, what skimmer is that? This one came with it. So this is whatever the Red Sea one is. And like, it works decently well, but if you can hear it, it's just, I don't know, it's a bit loud. Or, or better, better way to put it is it's what I hear out of both tanks on a regular basis is running. Also really loud is the Apex Auto Feeder that just kicked on. So let's show you guys my feeding system. So as you can see, we got lots of flow just kicked up into the return pump chamber. And the feeder just dropped in some pellets. Now the pellets are going to swirl around here until they get sucked into a return pump. So you can see those little pellets kind of swirling around. And they get sucked into the return pump. It shoots it out into the tank. And you'll see the fish swimming around going crazy for it now. So a really cool way to hide your auto feeder. Right? No one wants to see a big chunky feeder sitting on the edge of the tank. So hiding it down there is a great way to do it. Um, yeah, and see, I have lots of flow. I have a little pump in there basically on max. So it's doing a ton of flow inside of this chamber and it keeps the pellets suspended. It keeps them circling until they get sucked into the pumps. There you go. So it's going for round two of pellets. So I currently have it do two rotations of pellets. The pellets are on the lowest setting, so it doesn't drop a lot. It only drops a little bit, but it does two drops. It does that twice a day. Um, in the morning, I feed Nori to the tank. Uh, I've got the little uh, Innovate Marine feeder, so they get Nori twice a day. And it gets pellets twice a day, just a small portion, so they get two snacks at noon and three. And then I feed Frozen whatever other various foods at nighttime. Um, Greg saying sad that the price point equals a couple hundred more than the Apex EL. I honestly think that's why they released Apex EL is to compete against it. Um, if the e Coral was like 200 bucks less than the Apex, I think it'd do really well being at the same price. It's a little bit harder just because they have so many more modules and add-ons and stuff you can do with the Apex, right? So if they were, you know, 200 bucks cheaper, I think they'd be in a really good position. But I don't know, that's up to, I mean, I generally not dig into price because I think the price is, depends on what the person perceives value is. I know, good lord, it's loud, exactly. <laughs> that is my biggest complaint with this thing is it's freaking loud. You can hear it from across the house. Um, what light am I using to grow macro algae? This is the AI Prime Fuge. Um, I was actually beta testing this light for a month or so before it came out and this thing is a beast. Uh, when I first started, I had like a softball size of Chato in here. In three and a half a weeks, this whole chamber was full. And that was with me giving away Chato. Like I give away big chunks of the stuff constantly to people because it literally grows like, if you look in the side, it is literally top to bottom. Like this is a solid chunk of Chato. It's amazing how well this thing grows it. Highly recommend this light. Um, chance to take snails get sucked into the Vectra. Do you take a chance? Um, well, I don't really, I have those super tiny ones, those little crustaceans and stuff, but nothing's really been an issue. I haven't had any issues of anything bad getting sucked in. I purposely let food get sucked into it every day and it's never been an issue. Uh, Robert, yeah, so yeah, Prime, no problem, welcome. Have you found the dwarf angels nip at corals? So, I have a coral beauty and I used to have a purple whip gargonian and a purple plume and a gold whip gargonian and he destroyed them. He just kept nipping at them until they just deteriorated over time. Now my candlebra gargonian, not an issue. Like you can see how fluffy that thing is. Crazy fluffy, he doesn't touch it. So it's kind of been hit or miss. So I haven't bothered adding the other ones back in just because they might be goners. I see a tank of fire and I just stir. <laughs> Yeah, Kevin is the man if you need cleanup crew. Or possibly rock flowers. But you have to ask him on that one. Uh, so yeah, look at that. Actually, the light's starting to show a bit better on camera now. The lights are dimming down. Top-down shots are always kind of fun, too. Love the top-downs. Do, do, do. So yeah, what else you guys want to know? What else would you like to know about the five months into the upgrade? So I've got to peel that paper off one of these days. Oop. 
acans, very slow growers. Oh, well, I guess it's not bad for my one head, but it's been three or four years now up to this big colony. Checking in Alberta, Canada. Excellent, excellent. Welcome, welcome. Uh, Miami Hurricane. This guy grows like crazy. This is one of the fastest growing chalices I have. It's amazing how quick that thing grows compared to everything else. Doo, 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 doo. Super awesome Scully. He's pretty cool. I still got to find a good spot for that guy. Getting six flowers from Kevin's excellent. Kevin did still have a bunch left over. He didn't sell at the show. So if anyone is in his area, he is the man to talk to. Uh, Yellow Tang's still a bit of a punk in the tank. He's probably like the, the bully of the tank. I added my yellow chorus rush that was in the nano to the big tank, and it hides most of the time. And I think it's because of the yellow tank. So I haven't seen him. He hides in the sand. He pokes his head out once in a while. So hopefully they get along soon. He comes out and he's more social. Horses. Horses what? <laughs> little Zoas throughout. I think my next little kind of venture is I might just use Zoas, start mounting Zoas on the main rock structures in like the lower regions and just let it kind of fill in the bottom half of the rock. Acan Rose looking sharp. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. Very happy with the Acan Garden. It's been doing quite well. Uh, Duncan moved that guy kind of into the back onto the ledge. It's a little less light and it seems to be doing well. I have this battle with myself because I trying to declutter the sand bed. So lately I've been trying to mount everything onto the rocks. Um, Kevin, I donated to an online auction for Dave. Oh, that's awesome, Kevin. Um, speaking of that, Dave's nano tanks. Um, he used to do live streams. He has some medical issues right now. And so Billy Pipes set up a GoFundMe for him. So if you just search Dave's nano tanks on GoFundMe, you can donate. I threw in a bit of money for him too. Dave's was an awesome guy. So if you want to support him, go check it out. I'll see if we can throw a comment or a link in the comments later for you guys. But yeah, super awesome guy. Dave is awesome. And ton tons of love and support going towards the GoFundMe to help him deal with his medical bills. So hopefully Dave, you know, gets through everything. And yeah, we will post that link a little later for you guys. Uh, otherwise, everything in there is doing well. So... All these little corals and stuff, just mounting stuff to little rocks and trying to build ledges, trying to get as much as I can off of the sand bed, just so it's easy to clean and it kind of gives it a little bit of a cleaner look. So that's why Gawney Island developed and a lot of this other stuff. Ah, there's the pink hippos. I knew they're in there somewhere. So yeah, I don't know. Everything's doing pretty good. And eventually, I'm going to get the sand bed clear. I might build a little bit of a pedestal. I have a little bit of the flat Marco rock left over. You can see the raisins in the middle are on a chunk of rock. So I might just build it up a little more of a pyramid or something. So I can angle it up and down on all sides. Like maybe like a, yeah, like a pyramid triangle. And I'll use that just to get them off. Because sometimes if they get pushed into the sand and they get buried in the sand too long, you could lose heads on it. So just that little tiny pedestal, kind of like on some of these guys, just make that big of a difference to keep the colony more thriving and happier over overall. How much par is your SPS getting? So we are not in the super duper bright peak of SPS of the day. We're on the rest of it, but, but let's check since I already had the par meter up. So for instance, uh, this guy right here is getting, at the current moment, 275 par. Over here, we're getting about 240. This guy in the back, 260. Purple bonsai, 250. Uh, pink Cadillac is getting about 230, 240. Um, a can's about whoa, 160 right there. 114 by the glass, so they're getting between I'm gonna say 220 to 300 probably for most of the acros. Uh, now this is after 3 p.m., so it's a little bit lower par. From 12 to 3, I'm experimenting and I up my whites a bit, so I up my whites by 10% for that little like hot period of the day. 
And so that's one of my current little experiments is trying to see how that affects coloration and growth to have that little bit of extra intensity. So a little tweak to the previous schedule I shared in the past and I'll share this one out once I've experimented a bit more with it, but so far so good. It's been working out pretty well. Uh, just go on, what light are you using? These are Ecotech Radeon XR15s and they also have the diffusers on them. So there's original light and got the diffuser clipped on the bottom and to me, I it gives kind of a LED T5 hybrid kind of look to it. Personally, is how I feel about them. Do, 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 do. I wonder if I get a live stream from a GoPro in the tank. Probably not through the water. That'd be kind of cool to try one day. All right, Rip posted the GoFundMe, so easy if you guys want to check that one out. Boop. Get the back a bit of a cleaning the other day. Trying to make sure I clean it every few weeks just so it doesn't get built up with stuff. Keeps that nice clean look. Oops, I slacked on the bottom. Surprised your ACANs can take that much light. Yeah, they're doing well actually. ACANs are loving it. They're actually, since I started feeding them more, I'm getting better colors out of them. Um, have you power tested the Nano with the AI Prime? We can do that if you want. So yeah. ACANs are loving the light and they're loving the flow, the par, everything. They're super happy. All right, let's give the Nano a quick par test. Why not? Get this mounted. All right, so the Nano is a pretty flat schedule. So this guy in the back is getting about 160. Uh, here at the front with the encrusting Montes, same thing around 160-ish. These acros on top right are getting around 277, 270. Uh, my little pink Cadillac nub in here is getting 220. My Sunny D's are ringing under the light. They're getting close to 300. And I think I have the light around 70% for kind of a bit of a reference point. What intensity are you running your radions at at peak hours? Okay, let me show you guys that. Your tank is looking amazing. Thank you, sir. Much appreciated. All right, so you want to know which light you're asking about. You're asking about the radions for the peak settings. All right, let me show you. Give me one sec, yeah. Let me open my app and double check. Uh, what intensity? Having an issue where my zoas are only opening to around 70%. Parameters all good. Rays, elk, lighting and flow, nothing changed any ideas. How new are your ACANs? Are they old ones or are they ones that are freshly added to your system? Um, sometimes they will just take a while to settle in after parameter change. Um, have you thought about a species only tank? Rock flowers. Uh, the Nano is, I'm only really adding new corals of rock flower variety to the Nano. So there is some other stuff in there currently, but it is, I'll just leave what's in there now. Okay, so you kind of see the two hour, three hours of my day, I got that little boop up into it. And my normal chunk of the day is AB plus ish at 70%. So I got all the blues maxed out and about 25% red and green, 24% white, white, and 22% cool white. So that's kind of like the normal period of the day. That's not my intense peak. And then my intenser peak, it's still 70%, but I raised the whites to 40%. So the red and green still 25 and that's 40. So that is what I'm currently experiment with and I'm doing that for the three hours of the day. Um, kind of like cook the corals a little bit and just br hopefully bring out some more colors. Now oddly the white, the white, the whiter look has actually been growing on me the more I do it and see it. So it gives a nice, very vibrant, crisp look to the tank, which I kind of like. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. It looks amazing. Have the AI probably running on max on my Nano. It'll be close to 300 across the top. Thanks so much for doing that. You're most welcome. 
uh, running the same lights with the diffusers at the same height as you. Um, so your tank is perfect. Nobody has a par meter around here. There you go. If your lights are similar height, similar lights, you're going to have, you know, same ballpark of lighting. Now, why, so why do my three hours more? If the, the extra 15s have a fan on them and they kick on once they have more intense lighting, or sorry, once they get too hot. So 12 to three, I'm working. So I, I mean, lunch break, whatever, I come hang out. But if the fans kick on, it's when I'm not around the tank. When I'm around, they're not as intense, so they're silent. So that's part of my logic of why I did it at that time. Um, but overall, yeah, I, I really like the white look too. So I used to be hardcore blue and now a bit of white has actually been growing on me. But uh, I wish the camera showed exactly how I see it. But which rock flower is my favorite? Uh, which one? The pinky pinstripey ones are really cool. No, oh, wait, you can't see it there. Let's try the top down. I really like the rainbow one. So in person, this looks very pale. Uh, actually, all these much, much pinker in person. That one's really cool. Right of the scrabble egg zoas. That one's super vibrant pink with like a green skirt and kind of little pinstripes. And that one's really cool. It really is hard to say. I love all rock flowers. And a couple of little war paint ones and other funky ones. But I don't know. Honestly, I'm just excited to try and get these guys to breed. I think it's going to be super cool once they do. Um, what are you using for flow in the Nano? In the Nano, I have a Nero 5. So this is very broad flow, which I think is awesome for it. Yeah, look at that. Little guy's drawing towards the pump for the flow. Um, so a good pump. Okay, so with the Nero, one thing I think is awesome about it is I put that pump in my big tank and was able, that five and a half, six feet, it was able to move the whole water column. So whole water column moving from that one little pump. I have it in my nano tank and I can turn the flow way down and it's a nice gentle flow for the nano. So that the fact that I could buy a pump once using the small tank and keep using as I upgrade, I think is a huge plus for it. So it's something to consider if you guys are thinking about one, but the fact that the pump can grow with you is really cool. You know, you're 1,000 up to 3,000 gallons per hour. So it's a huge range of flow. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, have they spawned yet? I have not caught them spawning in the act, but I do have two babies in the tank. Um, I technically had three, but I'm only finding two right now, so it may or may not be in the third. So someone was making love at some point, and yeah, it's true. They're all pretty awesome, exactly. So overall, yes, love the rock flowers, but I'm still on my big project. I want them to spawn. I'd love to have hundreds of little babies in there, and it's going to happen. Don't you worry. It's coming. Um, Kevin's an amazing man and helped me out on some bulk rock flowers. So I'm going to hopefully either Friday, if not next week, depending on the weather, go pick them up. Um, now I ship them to the border because it's easier. You don't have to deal with as much paperwork as you do in shipping. It's easier to do it that way and they'll also have to pay the customs or duty on it. Not a big deal because um, they're not rock flowers are not sides. It's easy to bring them back and they're cheaper in the States and Canada. So hopefully in a week or two from now, the whole bottom of that tank is going to be covered in rock flowers. I think it's going to look amazing. I cannot wait. Um, one thing that I love is at nighttime when the tank goes to super blues, it's just like a pff, black light party. It's like whoosh, of like crazy colorful photos. Uh, if you guys check my Instagram, you'll see when I posted some of the nighttime shots of it. So at Reefties on Instagram, if you're not checking it out, check it out. Um, all the pictures I post too, I always try and make it look as close as I can to what I see. Um, I kind of feel bad because right now on the web camera the colors suck compared to what I see. So it's hard to do that. Uh, all pretty awesome, much easier. Exactly. Do you do water changes on the Nano? If so, how often? Yes, I do. Um, I probably do five gallon bucket, but it's probably like four gallons. I probably do that once every week or two. I'm trying to do it weekly. So four to five gallons a week, which is a huge water change on a Nano. The water I take out is crystal clear, so I probably don't even need to do that much. But I'm also trying to feed the rock flowers pretty heavy because I feel like it's going to help them spawn more often. So heavy in, heavy out. And one bucket water change on an anno is really not that hard. And it keeps everything super duper happy. Um, big tank, I'll do a 5 gallon or a 10 gallon water change on it. 
The other thing I've been doing lately is trying to vacuum the sand bed more often. So on when I do that five gallon, five to ten gallon water change every week or two, um, I try and sand, suck the sand bed or the sump. I'll just pick a different area and just clean it as I'm sucking it. So it's kind of like a cleaning thing. So that's the main gist of the water change systems on both tanks. Eventually, I do want to automate water changes. I think that will be absolutely amazing. And then I can just vacuum the sand once in a while just for fun. But I think it's going to be an awesome way to keep the tank stable. Um, in the past, I've done the thing where, you know, don't need to do water changes for a while and all that stuff. But honestly, all the tanks I've owned, they always look their best when they get a regular water change. You know, and I only do 5 or 10 gallons on my 160 gallon, you know, which is a very small percentage, but just keeps everything happy. So the Nano gets obviously a much bigger percentage, but keeps it all happy. Rip Van, don't forget to hit that thumbs up. Much appreciated, Rip Van. If you guys enjoy these, hit the thumbs up. I do them every week. Um, if you guys don't know the time, which you should by now, uh, 3 p.m. provincial time, 6 p.m. Eastern time. Do that every Wednesday. Uh, Mondays I release a new video, so it's usually 7 a.m. my time, which is when I start work. So I hit publish, go to work. And 7, which would be 9 p.m. Eastern time. How involved is your wife with your tanks? The wife likes the tanks. She doesn't necessarily like my explosion when I'm working in aquascaping and changing things, but she likes to raise bulb. I'll have to get her on a stream one day for fun. See if she'll do it. Would you consider going bare bottom? In a frag tank, I would go bare bottom. In a display tank, I don't think I would. I just like the look of sand. I think it looks more natural. Like, I, I do have a black bottom under the sand, so I had the option in case I ever wanted to, but I don't know. To me, sand just looks so much more natural. It looks like the ocean. If I go snorkeling, you know, this is what it looks like. So I personally don't think I would. If um, I would, yeah, like a frag tank, for instance, I'd probably have a frag rack and not bother with sand. But yeah, if it's a nice display, sand for the win. Another kind of funny random thing. I had three bubble tips in my tank at one point. Clowns didn't touch it. This little Kenya tree leather, love it. It's the only thing they care about. And if I touch it or go within like three or four inches of it, I'll get headbutted. So they're very protective over their little their little leather coral. And they sleep in the branches like little hammocks. It's kind of cute. Uh, the other day, someone's asking, "What is my oldest fish?" My oldest fish still is that clownfish. I've had that guy for probably five to six years now. He's been through many tank upgrades. Biggest one in there, and yeah, still happy, still going strong. So something else to consider with. Fish, you know, a lot of these fish, you're potentially having them for years and years and years, right? Like a fish can live 15, 20 years. So sometimes some people like, you know, try and buy cheap fish and stuff like I'll spend an extra 10 or $15 on a fish to know it's healthy and I don't have to worry about quarantining and diseases and issues like a little pre-quarantine because what is like $15 over like 15 years of having a fish? It's nothing. And it's just not worth the household risking other fish. Are you mixing your own salt or buying it from the store? I mix my own salt. I have a 35 or 50 gallon brute container, which is one of those big brute trash cans with a pump inside. I have a Coral Box DC 12,000, I think, like a really big beefy return pump in there and it just mixes the water. I have my RODI that goes straight to the barrel with a little float switch. Um, so I just fill that up whenever it's low, dump in some salt and turn on the pump and it just mixes and mixes and mixes for me. So that is my mixing station. Um, eventually, when I actually get the, by the house and move upstairs and take it all over, I'm going to put the tank upstairs and I want to automate water changes and I'll do like a proper mixing station. But for now, um, I don't really bother storing RODI water. I just have a salt water bin. To fill the containers, I take my RODI and I'll just like plunk it into the container, literally, and just fill it directly at the tank so I'm not hauling around buckets of water, which is a good way to go. Uh... Thanks so much for the videos, brother. Serious respect for all the effort you put in. Thank you. Much appreciated. This is definitely a labor of love, but I appreciate those comments because it motivates me to keep doing it. So, thank you. Um, if any of you guys are in is it Connecticut or Cincinnati, wherever Rhode Island is, apologize. U.S. Geographics, geography is terrible. Uh, keep on reaping is in three weeks, three and a half weeks. So I'm going to go. Hopefully some of you guys are going to be there. Come say hi. Come check it out. It should be a lot of fun. Uh, wondering if it would be okay if I put my carbon and pantyhose in my filter socks. 100% okay. That would work quite well. 
Um, in a place somewhere else to run a sump, also do you run carbon 24-7? I run small amounts of carbon. And speaking of your pantyhosing, I li literally have a bag of Kemi Pure Plu sitting between my sump baffles. Because I don't have a reactor to put it in yet, so it's just kind of hanging in the middle, chilling in there, doing its thing. So it's basically an identical thing that you're talking about. Um, Wincy, the lady that I saw on my Monday video, she literally has a pantyhose just hanging underneath the return pipe. So it's kind of passively throwing through it. It's so... Uh, Groton, Connecticut. Thank you very much. You'll be there. Excellent. Come say hi. Um, so if you put carbon in a reactor, is more efficient. If you have it in a bag just in your sump, it's not as efficient because you're not forcing water through it. So it can go around it, but some will still go through it. So you'll still, you'll still get benefits. Um, with carbon too, I mean, it can be depleted very fast if you're forcing too much through it. So I always like to run just a trickle through carbon. Um, I'll probably put some in the NAS reactor soon once I get that set up. But the same thing, it'll be just like a bit in there or I'll just have really low flow through it. <laughs> what do you do when I go on vacation? Well, my last vacation what, vacation was like working vacation reef of Palooza and all I did is film YouTube videos and hang out with other reefers, which is pretty fun. But if I go somewhere tropical-ish, um, I usually try and sneak in a bunch of snorkeling, a little bit of scuba diving, because I love that. <sighs> were you at Reef of Palooza Orlando? I sure was. If you were there, why didn't you say hi? <laughs> nope, I was there. I was wandering around doing it the whole time. Um, how often should I switch Kemi Pure pouches in my 20 gallon? Um, I have Kemi Pure in my 20 gallon. I probably changed every one to two months. Um, I use the Kemi Pure Blue. It has phosphate remover, like a GFO type of resin built into it. So it kind of kill two birds with one stone. Um, so I've always used that for nano tanks because I find it works well. Um, jellyfish tank upstairs, same thing. They have these little tiny little dinky packets of Kemi Pure Blue. I put those in the jellyfish tank and change them every one to two months. So, quick and dirty. My newest reefing shirt. I think it's pretty awesome. I sketched that one out, and then my wife sketched a better version for me, because she's an awesome artist. And this is what we got to come out with. So, little angler fish, I think is pretty awesome. I'm stoked for it. Uh, just did a new design, which will hopefully be here sometime soon. I was hoping to be here for today, but it'll be out soon. So, I have fun making shirts. If anyone wants a shirt, reefjuice.com slash shop. Super soft, awesome shirts. Um, yeah. I really like them. Are you going to refuse to Chicago? Uh, probably not. I feel like I'm tripped out for the year with all these reefing shows. I'm, it's going to be four shows this year, which is a lot. It's like most I've ever done my life. So probably not go to Chicago. So just Orlando for this year and then keep on reefing. And then I'm going to go to Macna in the fall, which should be good. Uh, have you ever been to the Great Beer Reef? No, I've not. I've not been to Australia. I would love to one day, though. I think it'd be an awesome to go check it out. One thing that I do want to do, um, I haven't quite figured this out yet because it's not the cheapest thing in the world to do. So I'm kind of on the fence. I don't know how I'm going to work it, but uh, the Coral Restoration Project, you might have seen I posted on my Reef Tube's Facebook page about it and they're doing a project to help restore the coral reefs and they're making like coral trees so you can like sponsor a tree or grow out there. I think it'd be really cool to go on that trip with them and film it all, video it, like video them restoring corals and fragging them and putting them on the trees and growing them out and planting them on reefs. And if they're going to try and line it up, hopefully do it when the corals are spawning. So I think that'd be amazing. So I don't know for sure, but I'd love to go on that trip. I think it'd be like an amazing video. So we'll see. Not the cheapest, but may or may not be able to swing it. So we'll see. I think it'd be really cool though. Um, Ozzy, I'm heading there in two weeks. First time and been living there for six years. You're living there. Oh, you're, you're, that's money. That'll be awesome. That'll be a really cool trip. Uh, what's the benefit of running Kemi Pure Blue as far as to Elite? I've never used Elite. Um, I don't know if Elite has the phosphate remover in it. I know Blue does, so I'm not too sure if there's any different side from that. I've honestly only ever used Kemi Pure Blue um, or just regular carbon. So big tanks, I generally don't use the Blue. I generally just use standard carbon. In the smaller tanks, I've always used the Blue because I feel you get the benefit of the extra phosphate remover out of it. Uh, be cool just to help them. Yeah, I think it'd be really cool. I think it'd be an awesome experience to go diving and, you know, help them manage a coral tr frag tree and all that stuff. I, just, I don't know. It'd just be something cool to do. And it'd be a wicked video. <laughs> it's kind of terrible. I spent half my trip just filming it, but it'd be cool. Um, what skimmer would you recommend for a 20-gallon? Bad thing, some nitrates you just bite only having two fish. Okay, 20-gallon, don't even bother with the skimmer. Honestly, the big skimmers work well. The nano skimmers, 
they're okay. They don't do an amazing job. And they're usually expensive for their size. Just do water changes. Five gallons a week on a 20 gallon, 25% water change, it's gonna solve most of your issues. So a little bit of effort, you don't have a, you don't have the extra power draw, you don't have the extra noise. So I honestly, I have a skimmer in my 20 and I just leave it turned off. I haven't turned it on in like a month because the water changes solve all my water issues. And you know, the price of what, $200 for a nano skimmer, that bucket of salt that you get from it will last you like a year or two. So the same price you spend on the skimmer. So hey buddy, hey buds, wanna say hi? To the internet. Hello internet. This is my dog. He likes the fish. Yeah. Um, Elite has GFO so the difference is phosphate removal speed. Yeah I don't know. I'm honestly not sure. Never used Elite in my life. Uh, I do like the blue though so I stuck with it. Uh, 75 gallon from the ground up was wondering if you had any advice on cycling and tips to combat different algae blooms based of the cycle. Okay tip number one leave your lights off while cycling. You, if you don't have coral, you don't need lights. Um, fish are fine if, well, hopefully there's no fish yet if you're cycling. But once you're done cycling, even fish right away, like they're fine with this room light. They don't need bright lights. They're for you, they're for the coral. So lights off while cycling. If you want to speed it up, you can use a bottle bacteria product. Uh, the two I've used and liked are Dr. Tim's One and Only and Fritz Tobostart. Uh, Fritz Tobostart is like the crazy high concentrated version. Um, both work well. When I originally cycled my rock, I cycled them in a brute trash can with heated salt water and a circulation pump, dumped in some Dr. Tim's, and I just add a little bit of ammonia every couple days just to feed that cycle, get that bacteria going. So I basically pre cycle my rocks. Uh, when I moved the tank from the old tank to the new tank, I used all new sand, probably would have had a mini cycle and stuff, so I bumped, dumped in a bunch of Turbo Start, and that basically boosted up those bacteria colonies and it more or less eliminated any issue I would have had with a cycle. Um, I was told not to get a skimmer by a local reefer for my LFS. Keep trying to sell me one. I'm sure it's beneficial, but I don't know if they're necessary. In a nano tank, honestly, I wouldn't bother with the skimmer. Just do your weekly water changes, you'll get more benefit out of it. In a big tank, yes, because they reduce the need for water changes. But they're just so easy to do in a small tank that I don't think it's worth doing the extra equipment, personally. Uh, I dose and I just switch salts, that's it. Yeah, so if you have a low demand on your tank, then you, water changes might be all you need. Dosing is when your water changes don't keep up. Someone see the nano. All right, Monta, we got the nano. Mix your salt dry, then mix in water and test. Not sure what you mean by that one, Kev. Oop, top downs, because top downs are awesome. Kind of a good little top down view. I'm excited for more rock flowers. Oop, some little zoas. But yeah, the other thing we get asked a lot is kind of how often or how do you know when to dose your tank. The only re way you're going to know is by testing. So you got to test to know. It's the secret to it all. Oh yeah, look at these guys. They've literally been in there for a couple of weeks and they're starting to grow together. So I'm going to have to frag one of the two or if it's not encrusted yet maybe move it but I'm amazed with how much growth like I don't know both the tanks just seem to be shining lately some some kind of magic in the air um, so another question I get asked a lot of people ask me how to switch salts nothing special do not do a big change at once like if you're gonna swap or use a new one just slowly incorporate to start using any water changes if you have you know if you do a five gallon water change with the new salt on a nano, okay, 25% is the new salt. You know, every week just keep doing that. You don't want to do a big massive change all at once. You don't want to change all your tank water. Terrible idea. Um, the other question I get asked all the time is which salt to use, or not which salt to use. Yeah, which salt to use. Whatever salt matches the parameters that your tank is. So if you keep your elk at eight, pick a salt that's an elk of eight. If you keep your elk at 10, pick an elevated one that has a 10 and 11. So just pick one that's close to parameters. Now, if it's a way different parameters, and I do a five gallon water change on my big tank, it's not gonna make much of a difference. Um, for a five gallon bucket, it's gonna be extremely minimal. Now, however, if I have an issue in my tank, and I, you know, I need to do this big massive water change, I change half the water out, 
and it's vastly different parameters, that could cause an issue on the tank. You know, that might even cause more harm than whatever you're trying to fix the water change. So always pick a salt that's similar to whatever parameters you decide to keep your tank at. How do you keep nuisance LG at bay? I don't really have any algae issues in any of my tanks, to be honest. Like, there is some bubble algae, like little minuscule amounts, but it's like in between little cracks where you don't even see or notice it. Uh, keep your nutrients in check is one of the biggest things. Um, having tangs probably doesn't hurt because if there's anything, they'll munch at it. The only bit of algae I know of is a little bit of potentially hair algae or something on my little rasta patch. Right in the middle there. It's like literally the only chunk of algae that I know of. But yeah, keep up on your maintenance and algae has never been an issue. I did have bubble algae in there. I used Vibrant to get rid of it. it took about six weeks and it went away. Um, yeah, I had little bits of hair algae in the past. I spot treated it using H2O2, which is hydrogen peroxide. Um, with that, just use don't exceed more than one mil per 10 gallons. Otherwise, it is not good for fish. It's more or less harmless because it oxidizes in the water and will turn to air bubbles. But too much of it can burn fish's gills. That's why one mil per 10 gallons is kind of the agreed safe amount. So don't go for that. Do you grow your own copepods in Fido? Yes, I do. Um, I did do a stream a few weeks ago on how to grow Fido. So check that one out. I'll do one on copepods one of these days. You can just dose elk, but be careful and go slow. Elk will bring them down. Uh, oh, mag's over 1,600. Okay. Mag's over 1,600. Mag is high. Just don't dose it and let it drop naturally. Um, calcium over 600, same thing. Your elk, all elk, I'm assuming that's elk, is 812. So I would keep your elk around 812 because that's a pretty nice place to be. And just do not dose calcium or magnesium for a while. So let it drop naturally. Easiest way to do it. It'll slowly be consumed, it'll slowly drop, and then you'll be good to go. Can't keep SPS for the life of me, even my water's at good levels. Well, at least from my test, any tips. Does your water levels fluctuate? The biggest thing for SPS is to be stable. Now, I also find if your tank is too new, there is some magical source that seems to be if there's any part of a cycle or that type of stuff in your tank, your SPS are generally not as happy. Um, in my experience, it seems to be after about four or five months of a new tank, then acros and SPS will start to be happier and they'll start to grow. So it does take a little while. Even when I, on my tank, if, like, my acros weren't doing much until the last month. So my, it's been about five months since I've upgraded. Now everything seems to be settled and I'm starting to notice a lot more growth. Um, he doesn't dose. Okay. So if you don't dose your tank, I'm assuming whatever salt you're using has elevated levels. So for instance, if you're using like the Red Sea Pro bucket, maybe just use the regular Red Sea bucket type of thing. Or if you're using reef crystals, maybe it's using Snowshin. So you're, I'm assuming you're using something with elevated parameters. So maybe just use one with lower parameters or not worry about it. Um, high calcium, uh, 600 is pretty high. I don't know if there's any negative effects on it. I've heard some anecdotal stuff, nothing 100%. Um, as for magnesium, if it's too high, um, certain inverts don't like it. But aside from that, depending on what's in your tank, it's the only one I know of offhand. I'm back. Long time no see. Welcome back. Bloop. Little garden in the counter. Ah, what do we get? All right, guys. I think I've answered all the questions. Any last minute questions, let me know. But I think that was a pretty good overview for a five months update. It's everything that came to mind whatever else you want to know so as always if you enjoyed it smash that thumbs up button if you're new make sure you guys subscribe if you want to get awesome shirts check out reefdudes.com shop and i appreciate all of you thanks for hanging out with me today <laughs> like peeking around the corner yeah um so hopefully you guys enjoyed this hopefully you learned something if you got any questions let me know afterwards in the comments below if there's something you want to see a video on check it out if you want to be extra loving, uh, patreon.com slash reefdudes. Thank you, Kevin, Gabriel, and Robert. You three are awesome. And thanks everyone for joining the stream. I will catch you guys on next week's stream. Cheers.